long for pure spiritual milk. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. The parish bulletin found at the entrances and on our webpage contains the music and readings for Mass. Today's Mass intention is for the Cathedral Parish. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Hubel. Assisting at this Mass is Deacon Ron Schmitz. The opening hymn may be found at number 447, O Sons and Daughters, number 447. Let us stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life, be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation, through Christ our Lord.
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in one font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. to the Lord for 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands inside. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Before I begin my homily this morning, since we still are in the octave of Easter, I think it's appropriate to wish all of you a blessed Easter, especially if some of you attended Easter Mass, in which I was not the celebrant. I want to take an opportunity to assure you of my continued prayers and let you know just what a beautiful, sacred triduum we celebrated here at the cathedral, thanks to the work of so many volunteers in particular. I wrote about that in the bulletin, so I won't spend too much time on that now. But suffice it to say, people put in long hours to ensure such a beautiful Holy Week. Our lectors do such a beautiful job, our musicians. Today we're joined also by our children's choir, our choristers. Our altar servers were just spectacular. And the many other people who helped prepare the beautiful sanctuary flowers, all the volunteers, just from the bottom of my heart, I'm deeply, deeply grateful. And I believe we honored the Lord beautifully. Now today, as we close the Easter octave, we also celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And I think we could just as easily call this Trust Sunday. I think there's a very important lesson about trust in today's feast. At some point, we need to decide to trust others. I know nothing about cars. If I have a problem with my car, I bring it in. And I do so, I believe, to a reputable person who won't try to overcharge me. I trust them. Sometimes we trust people and it backfires. But then you could say we're being fools for Christ. At other times, so many people, especially in our nation, begin with mistrust. I think it harms the unity of our communities, our cities, even our nation. And that can trickle down into the church. I've received more than a few solicitations via email indicating we can help you remove negative feedback about the cathedral from Google or whatever site it is. I know it's just a solicitation, but there's part of me that says, hey, if there's negative feedback, maybe I should be aware of that and learn from it. None of us is above criticism. At the same time, I strive to continue to do my best, as we all do in life. And I'm not suggesting that you Google your name either. That's never a good idea. Have some confidence in yourself. Don't always be looking around the corner for someone who may say something negative. 
And don't become a person who begins with mistrust. Seems to me that's a horrible way to go through life, especially as we celebrate the beautiful season of Easter, a season of hope and joy. There are many reasons why we can be joyful Catholics. Years ago, I was preparing to host some priests for dinner. I'm a lousy cook, so I thought I would try something out the week before and get one of those wonderful meals that's basically already made for you. And I went and purchased a piece of chicken wellington, something I could never make on my own. I carefully followed the instructions, only discovered that when I cut into it, it wasn't chicken wellington. It was mislabeled. It was a wonderful beef wellington, but it wasn't chicken. So I went back and called up the store, just be aware in case others were mislabeled. Now, did I cease trusting that grocery store? Of course not. It was just a mistake. And I even received a complimentary chicken wellington from the store, so I, I scored on that one. Ironically, people often put their trust in whatever they see in the internet. It's a huge mistake. If it's on the internet, it must be true. I also think that today is a good day to question ourselves about how shaky is our faith. Because we've all been through periods in our lives where our faith tends to ebb and flow. And it may not feel as strong or convicted. You may begin to doubt this or that. And I think today is a Sunday for all of us from that perspective. Until his canonization in 2019, John Henry Newman was one of the very, very few non-saints to be quoted in the Catechism. This alone bears witness to the profound influence he had on Roman Catholic thought. And you all know his story as a convert from being an Anglican. I think, however, my favorite quotation from Newman is this. 10,000 difficulties do not make one doubt, as I understand the subject. Difficulty and doubt are incommensurate. Think for just a moment about the important distinction that he made in that quotation, the difference between difficulty and formal doubt. There is a difference. Difficulties are part of the Christian journey of faith. We ought not to fear them. Newman, in particular, applied this principle to transubstantiation, something, to be honest, many Christians who are not Catholic can struggle to understand or believe. Our Catholic belief that the substance of bread and wine has been transformed through the Mass into the substance of the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior. Newman stated this about transubstantiation. People say that the doctrine of transubstantiation is difficult to believe. I did not believe the doctrine until I was a Catholic. I had no difficulty in believing it as soon as I believed that the Roman Catholic Church was the oracle of God and that she had declared this doctrine to be part of original revelation. It is difficult, impossible to imagine, I grant, but how difficult is it to believe? An ancient catechesis forms the basis for the Office of Readings yesterday, Saturday the octave of Easter. Part of that catechesis states, do not then regard the Eucharistic elements as ordinary bread and wine. They are in fact the body and blood of the Lord, as he himself has declared. Whatever your senses may tell you, be strong in faith. In part of the journey all this year, with those who were received in the church at the Easter Vigil. Six individuals baptized, an additional dozen received in the church. Is that all throughout the year they learn, they study, but they also struggle. They also seek truth, seek better understanding. And they, in fact, set a very good example for the rest of us that learning about the faith is a lifelong pursuit. We're never done. We never have it all. We need to continue to strive to learn 
but also continue to strive to trust. So we do not become the kind of person who's always looking around the corner, mistrustful of others, questioning their motives, and certainly questioning our faith. Surely, revealed truth can seem obscure at times, especially to our human reason. But as St. Thomas Aquinas taught, the certainty that the divine light gives is greater than that which the light of natural reason gives. Trust in your faith. Trust in the grace of God moving you to believe. Faith comes to our rescue. Faith that is founded on the very word of God who cannot lie and who will not lead us astray. Brothers and sisters, as we bask in the joy of Easter, as we gaze upon the beautiful sanctuary, and as we meditate upon the empty tomb, please allow the divine light to shine in to illumine your hearts and minds. Faith and trust in God are never separated from his church because Jesus founded the church and the Holy Spirit guides her still. And so with St. Thomas the Apostle as our guide as we heard today, may we confidently exclaim with all of our hearts, my Lord and my God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together now we profess our common faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in God's divine mercy, we now bring all of our prayers before the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as he leads the church, may he experience continued grace and strength as he bears witness to the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were baptized and received into the church this Easter season, may they continue to grow in virtue and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from the active practice of the faith, may they hear the gentle voice of the Good Shepherd, welcoming them back with love and divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are discouraged, downtrodden, and depressed, that the risen Christ may heal the sick and comfort all those who are afflicted in any way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, as they administer the sacrament of penance, may they be effective and compassionate instruments of God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially the innocent victims of violence. May they come to share in the joy of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, like the Apostle Thomas, we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and our God. As we present our needs, please help us to remain of one heart and one mind. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. The Cathedral Parish is dependent upon the financial support of her cherished parishioners and many welcome guests. There is a QR code in the Parish Bulletin from which to donate electronically. You may also use any of the four gold-colored offering drop boxes found at the Selby and Dayton doors just inside the church for your stewardship. We thank you for your generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and the praise of the Lord in His name for our good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, as assisting bishops and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of which our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ.
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, in the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements this morning, so thank you for your attention. First of all, I'd like to invite you to join us downstairs in Hayden Hall after Mass. Great way to conclude the Easter octave. We have hot coffee and fresh donuts. We certainly encourage visitors to join us as well. You may access Hayden Hall by means of the staircase of the narthex or the elevator. A blessing for expectant mothers will take place immediately following Mass in the Chapel of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our Divine Mercy program begins at 2 o'clock today. It includes beautiful sung selections from St. Faustina's Diary, Confessions, Eucharistic Adoration. Deacon Brent Bowman, a fourth-year seminarian from this parish, who eventually will be celebrating his first Mass of Thanksgiving, he will offer a brief reflection as well. It concludes with the chaplet at 3 o'clock. On Friday, April 19th, 7.30 p.m., so very soon, the choir school from the Cathedral of the Madeleine in Salt Lake City will offer a sacred concert. This outstanding youth choir will lift your spirits in this joyous Easter season. Please see the parish website for more information. And again, we do thank you for your participation. Certainly welcome any who may be visiting us today. We do encourage you to take a bulletin on your way out to learn more about the parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Let us sing number 442, Jesus Christ is risen today, number 442.